nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at Bliss. This game is brought to you by Aaron Mizzarelli of State Farm in Randolph. My licensed and experienced team members are here to serve you for all of your insurance and financial service needs in New Jersey and New York. We offer excellent customer service and our office is conveniently located in Randolph, New Jersey. For a free auto, home, life, or business quote, visit us at AaronMizzarelli.com or call us at 973-389-9999. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 973-927-2232. Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry. The team at Better With Physical Therapies one-on-one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. You can get better with better with physical therapy located in the madison ymca request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Chief, I'm a little busy. Uh, she wants it now. Explain to me how I'm going to do that. We got fast lane, Brian. The fast what? Fast lane. Bring her in. This is us? Paul Miller fast lane? Who else would do it? Buy a car? Trade a car? Finance a car? Have it delivered completely online? This is so easy. She could have done it herself. She said you're the car guy, Brian. Isn't that the truth? Get the fast lane, winner. It's the only way to fly. That's fast lane. Powered by Paul Miller. That is the Paul Miller difference. Calling all parents of young athletes. Did you know that safe medication disposal not only protects your young athletes, but also the environment they play in? Be a proactive guardian. Safeguard your home by disposing of medications properly through drop-off sites in New Jersey, located at most police departments and designated pharmacies. By doing so, you help prevent pollution of our precious environment, ensuring clean waterways and healthier surroundings for your young champions. Make a positive impact on their lives and the planet. Safely dispose of unused and unwanted medications today. At Pastorella Brothers, we love creating great food for our customers. Everything is made daily using real fresh ingredients, and you can taste the difference. We specialize in creating gluten-free options for our customers, all prepared in a separate area so there's no cross-contamination. We also pride ourselves on providing unparalleled catering for events big and small. We love
love what we do. Stop into Pascarella Brothers, you'll taste the difference. The Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. We use a collaborative team approach which benefits our patients and we accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ARPWAVE Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at Maximum MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love. Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right because CCMs are the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast it's worth the wait. Athletic Fields of America in Montville, New Jersey has become an industry leader in synthetic turf, serving the greater New York, New Jersey. Behind the goal, we reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit. The run will score, and freshman pull check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Good evening and welcome to The Hive here at Hanover Park High School in East Hanover, New Jersey. Zach Smolin here to bring you through all the action and an incredible divisional clash that we have today against the Mountain Lakes Herd and the Hanover Park Hornets. Both teams are 3-0 and on the season and are undefeated within, of course, their conference and division. However, Hanover Park are behind in the division because they only have played one game within the American goal. They're doing the coin toss at the middle of the field, and perfect time for us to pay some bills here on more Sussex Sports as we want to shout out all of our wonderful sponsors bringing you today's action, starting off with Hanover Park's key sponsor today, the Office Tavern and Grill. Located in East Hanover, they want to be the Hornets' home restaurant. The Hive is the home field. Office Tavern and Grill at the home restaurant. On game days, join them before or after the game and enjoy 20% off food when you wear your Hornets gear. Come enjoy their 40 beers on tap, delicious food, and their outdoor patio, especially right now, gorgeous night tonight. I want to see you at the patio after the game, and they can't wait to see you. Go Hornets. Here are their other sponsors, All Class Glass, Tracy Franco of Coldwell Banker, Lincoln Tech, The Office Tavern and Grill, Online Computer, Paul Miller Porsche, Regina Center LLC, 
and Zeifman Ortho. We'll roll through those again as we get ready for the national anthem here at the Hive. All right, excellent job honoring this great nation as we'll cycle through the Hanover Park sponsors again. As we've got ourselves, once again, after the office Tavern and Grill. We have our good friends at All Class Glass, Tracy Franco, Lincoln Tech, Online Computer, Paul Miller Porsche, the Regina Center LLC, and of course, Zeifman Orthodontics. Big thank you to them as our first sponsor today in our first quarter on the Mount Lake side, brought to you by Bed and Our Landscaping. This quarter is brought to you by Bed and Our Landscape Services. Bed and Our Landscaping specializes in landscape design, construction, and maintenance, including all aspects of masonry work, pretty much anything that you can think of related to your yard. Bed and Our Landscaping has served the northern and central New Jersey areas for over 25 years, nearly my entire lifetime, and employs only the best landscapers. We have our captains meeting at midfield today. This is gonna be a great match between these two teams. They've really duked it out a lot over the past five seasons. And Mountain Lakes has really had the edge over them, winning four of the last five, only losing in 2020 when Hanover Park won 41 to 13. Mountain Lakes and Daryl Fusco's, or Fusco, pardon me, Fusco's offense, defense, what have you, their culture is just so good. Mountain Lakes athletics, incredibly consistent. As are Hanover Park, I mean, they had that big run, they made it to the sectional championship game just two years ago, last year, a bit of a down year, but still a winning record. And now this time around, starting off 3-0, and something that they haven't done in the past couple of seasons, and they're being led by a wonderful youth movement, thanks to the Joeys on offense, Philippone and Borello. Borello in his last game was 15 for 19, 78.9% pass completion that is a career high for the young man as Hanover Park have also on defense yet to give it up more than 14 points in the contest that came against Madison just two weeks ago and what was a home game for them technically but played at a neutral site in Whippany Park due to some weather we have a gorgeous night here tonight so sit back relax enjoy some action as weather certainly be rough tomorrow so you know what if you like the game today go back and watch it again tomorrow morning you're gonna be stuck inside anyway with the rain so check it out, check out all of our other broadcasts here at Morris Sussex Sports as we get set and ready to go. We're looking over on our left side, Hanover Parker in their home black jerseys with the numbers on the front in gray, trimmed out in yellow. On the other side, a little bit of a mixture between the Cleveland Browns and Buffalo Bills as they have the Browns color scheme in the white and burnt orange, but of course the herd Buffalo on the helmet in blue. So getting ready to kick. From right to left are the herd against Hanover Park. As they're gonna send their young man, get his toes right behind that 35 yard line. He'll try to send it deep against a pair of Hanover Park receivers. It's Joey Philippone and I believe that's Asmir Parks over on the other side. So the herd are ready, the Hornets are ready. Let's do it here in East Hanover, New Jersey. Long fly over off the leg of the number seven of John Corbo. And it's picked up by Philippone. Philippone finds a hole, keeps on running, gonna cross down, and begins the drive at the 38-yard line. 
Well, Joey Filippone was a beast on defense last year, and now he's become a big offensive weapon. He has 15 carries for 51 yards and a couple of touchdowns to go along with a catch for 19 yards. So we'll see him plenty on both sides of the ball as this herd defense gets set and ready to go. On defense, Daryl Fusco's squad has allowed 7.7 .7 points per game and has forced seven turnovers. Hanover Park have really struggled with fumbles, a lot of turnovers. They turned the ball over four times against Kittatinny in their 6-0 victory in their last game. They'll definitely look to limit that here. Barello hands it off to Parks. Parks trying to squeeze his way through, and he'll fall down for a gain of about two yards. Asmir Parks gets the offense going with a small gain on first down. Mountain Lakes trying to protect their side of the field. And if you want to protect your home or auto or anything, Rami Atta is a lo local State Farm agent and would like to shout out the 2023 herd. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Morello outside. Finds a couple of blocks, goes around Kenny, and now is brought down just short of the first down marker. Nice gain of seven on the ground for Joey Borello as he's able to pick up a couple of yards. He's the team's leading rusher with 173 yards and three touchdowns on now 51 carries. Much like his brother, Mike Perello, big time quarterback runner, different kind of runner. Mike Perello was a lot bigger, so he would just try to plow through up the middle and follow his big offensive lineman. We'll see Perello go to the outside as, well, this time he does the Mike Perello method, gains two right at the middle, and it's a first down for Hanover Park as they're sent down right at the 50 yard line. So you know, three carries, get just enough 11 yards is enough for the first and right at midfield are the hometown Hornets. It's a whiteout today at the Hive, a lot of parents and the entire student section all decked out in white. We've also had the youth teams from Florham Park and East Hanover. It's the 50th anniversary of their youth football and cheerleading programs. They go to the outside with Parks, and there he goes. Parks just has the safety to beat. Across the 20, the 10, he's got it. Asmir Parks opens up the scoring. It's his third touchdown of the season. And after a 50-yard run over on the right side, it's six to nothing, Hanover Park. I mean, we'll, Asmir Parks just finding the space on the outside. Let's look at that one. Nice and easy at the very tail end of it. As the safety, the number 26 of Aiden Malnati, just unable to catch up to him. And now they'll go and try to make this one a seven point game. Laparnos is not kicking. It's gonna be, I believe it looks like Jack Kovacs. Oh no, it's not. It's the 22 of Giancarlo Murillo. Murillo is two for three on the season for extra points. Lifts one up, spins, and it's through. So he's good for his first try, and Hanover Park getting the job done. Up seven to nothing very quickly. Takes him almost a minute and a half, as over on our left side, we have a beautiful magenta sunset to help Hanover Park celebrate their first score of the game. So that's big for them, because Hanover Park didn't score until the very last quarter last week. 6-0 win over Kittatinny. Again, the turnovers were a big problem, but they actually finished that game even in turnovers as they were able to pick off Kittatinny four times with three different quarterbacks. Interception's not exactly something that you can accept, or rather expect, though, against the run-heavy herd. So Hanover Park going to send their special teams units out there as trying to protect their home turf and win two, or rather win one against Mountain Lakes for the first time in three years. The herd averaged 289 yards a game and 274 of them come on the ground. They've only passed for 45 yards this entire season, but Ben Mineter is an excellent game manager on offense. A lot of clean handoffs for him. He calls the signals well from under center, and we'll see what he can get done here for the herd after they get the ball after this kickoff. Ian Redzapajic, the senior halfback in safety, deep to receive along with Massimo Corvelli. And he'll go off the leg of Joey Borello. His side is ready, and they'll sky one. And right beyond the 10 yard line. And he'll fall through, he'll be stopped at the 29, hustling at his Corvelli. And now the herd will have their first chance on offense. Mountain Lakes averaged 31.3 points per game, and they're good enough for 
the fourth ranked team in all of New, uh, North Jersey Group 1, just about where you'd expect them to be. They're always a dangerous team year in and year out. Had a deep playoff run last year. And bringing back a lot of players. The only one that they lost, they actually won their section, but they lost the group tournament in the final against Woodbury, losing 31 to seven, but beat many good teams on their way. First handoff over to 30 and brought down around the 31, 32 yard line. So a gain of three on the ground. And that is their number 26 of Aiden Malnati. So Malnati able to pick up three on the ground. And let's see what he was able to do in their last time. Mountain Lakes in their last game stomped on Madison. Only common opponent so far between these two teams as hustling ahead now and continuing to carry the pile is Malnati. He's able to cross over to the 36 yard line and make it the third and manageable three. So a couple of carries, picks up seven yards. As there it is, Finn Kenny able to bring him down. It's been a key part of this team for many years. And take a look at some of the contributions from Malnati. He's only rushed eight times for 50 yards this season. Now they send him into the outside. He's stone cold, but where are they gonna spot this? I think they'll give it to him in the 40s. It'll be a gain of four and a first down. As there's Hernando, whose older brother was just a beast for the herd a couple of years ago. And now Jordan Hernando taking his spot here as a halfback quarterback. And yeah, certainly a family affair between these two teams. A lot of, now I don't even want to say generational because it's often brothers or cousins, but also often we'll see you know, fathers and then their sons out there playing. As once again, they're set up in their typical wing teeth formation. Minute to the outside and swallowing him up. And they did have him short originally behind the 40. And it looks like it might be a four and out. Let's see where they spot the ball. No, they do have him just enough for the first down. So I made a mistake before. He did not gain enough for the first down. But this time they do. As they're able to pick up two yards, just enough for the first. Four rushes for 11 yards. Minotaur is not known to throw the ball too much. They try to swing it a little bit more towards the outside, but able to swallow up the number 23 that time of Ian Red Zapajic. I believe it's Daniel McDougal. So it'll be second down and nine yards to go, and this is exactly what the herd are going to do to you. They're going to grind it down. They're going to run up the middle. They're going to try to move things to the outside as Zamba, Marco Zamba, the big tight end moves over to the right side, and they like to follow him with their runs. Minitor, play fake, scrambles over to his right side. Little bootleg play. Now Finney and company are out. Minitor scrambles, fires, and the pass incomplete. As he's looking, I don't think he was even trying to complete the pass that time. Over to Malnati. But a smart move by Minitor that time to get rid of that football, and instead of taking a sack, keep me at a manageable third and nine. Menator 5'11", also plays safety for his team. Only five for now 10 this year, 45 yards, a pick and a touchdown. As long as 21, but he has that touchdown to Marco Zamba, and they have some good safety outlets on this team for him should he decide to throw the balls. Now they have Zamba lined up all the way at the other end of the field with his foot right on that line. Original line of scrimmage is fumbled by Menator, recovered immediately by Hanover Park. It's the number 11 of Joey Philippone and a big turnover for Mountain Lakes, a team that usually plays it very cleanly. They only have four turnovers this season, make it five and a Hanover Park first down. As you can see here, Miniter just drops the snap, goes a little high and he puts his hands down and Philippone was right there to smother that football. So a good play by him. As Joey Philippone picks up another fumble recovery for this Hanover Park team. And this defense, I mean, what more can you say? This is now their fourth fumble recovery of the season. They've now forced 11 turnovers in three plus games. Here's Borello dropping back, looking for options. Fires towards the sideline, pass is complete. As it'll go in the hands of the 13 of Jack Kovacs, and they'll pick up a couple on the completion. 
So that's the first attempted pass so far this game for Hanover Park. Picks up a couple of yards. Jack Kovacs this year, that's his eight catch. Now he has 43 yards. Hanover Park have seven of their 11 touchdowns coming into this game through the air. Here's Parks who ripped off that 50 yard rush and he's stone cold. Now brought back, there is a flag on the field right by the line of scrimmage. So this ball might be going back anyway, but let's see if they lose the down or not. And Coach Dan Fulton seems to be suggesting that this would be going against Mountain Lakes. Yeah, it looks like the signal well, the signal from the official was weird because he pointed towards Hanover Park and then said penalty declined. And now they're looking back over to the side. So if they decline the penalty, it'll be third down and about 10. As Hanover Park called for an illegal shift, it's a little late for that flag to be thrown, but they'll get pushed back anyway. So from the 36, over around now the 44. So Hanover Park guilty of their first penalty of the game. It'll be second down and about 15 yards to Milo in motion. Up the middle, Philippone, there he goes, and rumbles ahead to the 34-yard line. Big chunky yards for him to get. He picks up 10 on the ground, and it'll be second down and a much easier six left to go. Now Philippone showing flashes of his older brother, although again, Joey Philippone and Joey Borello, very different than their older brother Michaels, but still effective for their Hanover Park squads, bringing a very different skill set to the team and obviously contributing to their successful start to the year. Both teams 3-0. Borello, he's going to run it around the right side, and he's pounded down, led up by the number eight of Giacomo Bevapqua. As they'll pick up about maybe one on the ground for him, so that's his 10th total yard of the game. That'll be a fourth down in uh, about six to go. And known coach Dan Fulton, they're gonna go for this one. Hanover Park do have a pretty robust passing game. 46 for 69 on the season, Jerry Borello coming into this game with just a pair of interceptions. Also has four touchdowns. From the 3-4 defense, they're looking for that extra rusher. Looks like he's gonna be coming from that left side now. Drop back, Brello long heave and in and out of the hands of the 23 of Red Zapogic. A dangerous pass that time coming out of the hands of Borello and now they turn it over on downs as Hanover Park's drive stalls after the turnover. But if you're, both teams you're happy with the result, right? Because if you're Mountain Lakes in that situation, you're glad that Hanover Park wasn't able to march down the field and score and you're proud of your defense. If you're Hanover Park, you're disappointed that you didn't score and move the, your way down the field, but you have already forced a turnover from Mountain Lakes. You've eaten a little bit more time off the clock and it's still a long field for the herd to go in their rush heavy offense. And Hanover Park is really, really good at stopping the run. In their last game against Kittatinny, Hanover Park allowed just 59 yards on the ground and only 27 in the air. Hand off to the outside, has some room, spreads through the middle of the defense, keeps on going, carries the pile, and he broke loose! He broke loose, but lost his balance at the 20 yard line. Jordan Hernando, what a run from the 34 to the 20. That's a 46 yard carry and first down and way more. So now we've seen these big bursty runs from both of the smaller backs on this team. Now watch Hernando hustle. There are two Hornets and he's getting a little bit of help from his friends and he just barely tries to keep his balance there. Takes a tumble down as Minotaur hands it off again here and this time the Hanover Park defense there to stop him. All right, so his rushes today are for two yards, 46 yards, and now another two. It'll be second down and eight. And six minutes left to go here in quarter number one. Both these teams showing their big play capabilities. Mountain Lakes given a gift as Minotaur. Play action, fires, end zone wide open is Marco Zamba, his favorite target, and it's a quick touchdown for the herd to come right back with a chance to tie it. 18 yards in the air in the TD. And just look how wide open Zamba is.
Well, or maybe not. Although, you know what? You saw the play. <laughs> Zambo was absolutely wide open in the corner of the end zone. As now Matt Scherzer is going to send it up. Nearly blocked by Hanover Park. The kick goes up and it is good. So Scherzer has that one complete for the extra point. And we're all tied up at seven. So now Hanover Park potentially kicking themselves a little bit for not converting and being able to score on that turnover. As Ben Miniter on just the 12th pass he's attempted this season finds Zamba for the second time this year in the end zone. And they've tied it up at seven apiece. If you're looking for a place to hang out and relax with other Hanover Park fans after the game, check out the Office Tavern and Grill in East Hanover. They want to be the Hornets home restaurant. If you're not already watching the game over there, head on over now before or after the game with your Hornets gear on. You can get 20% off of food. Again, that's when you wear your Hornets gear. Come in and enjoy their 40 beers on tap, delicious food, and their outdoor patio. They can't wait to see you. Go Hornets. You know what? The PA guy just read it as well, so there we go. Both showing some love for the office, Tavern and Grill. And, I mean, I don't know if there's any team that I've covered here at Morris Sussex Sports that has more fans that have their gear. I mean, the fifth quarter club does a really nice job keeping that school spirit up here at Hanover Park High School. So we got a line drive kick. And... Philip Pong grabs it deep on his own end. There he goes across the 30. Nearly brought down by the edge of his shirt. He's a big man, though. He's brought down right around the 43-yard line. A huge game for Philip Pone to set Hanover Park up for another chance on offense. So we've seen a little back and forth action. This will be the third possession already for the Hornets. As they force the turnover before, they stalled out on just four downs on the last drive. As Mountain Lakes defense, no slouch again. I mean, both these teams averaging, allowing just about a touchdown per game coming in Hanover Park, 7.3 points per game. Mountain Lakes, 7.7. .7. So their defenses already have really, really met their limits. So let's see who steps up here. To Milo in motion. He'll cut up the middle as they give it to Parks in the backfield. And Zamba is there to bring him down. Asmir Parks on his third carry of the game gains nothing. And it'll be second down and 10. Both these teams run first. They'll run the ball a lot more than you'll see them throw it, but both have very good quarterbacks. Both quarterbacks now just one for two today. Barello with time. Completes it now over the middle. Finding some room to run. Now he cuts over to the outside. Finding some room and then gets knocked over across the 45. They're going to mark him down. They're going to say he got all the way to the 50 for Joseph Tantawi. So that's a gain of about seven in the air. And a solid completion to the number seven. The third down and three yards to go. And Hanover Park have a ton of different plays that they can go to in this situation. You can go Parks up the middle. You could try Borello on the outside. You can try those quick slants that they love to run in those passing situations. Going to be a little difficult, though, against a Mountain Lake squad that really stacks the middle of the field and doesn't want to let you complete anything over in that portion. The Cimbrello to the outside, tries to juke around. He's got nowhere to go, and he's brought down around his own 40. A sack and a loss at 10, and Hanover Park looks like they'll have to punt it away. Well, there you go. I mean, it's the usual suspect of, Camo, uh, of Cosmo Fusco right there. 6'4", 250 pounds, and lays him down with a big time sack. And now Hanover Park's offense stalling down on back-to-back -back drives. So Bevacqua is back deep to receive, have you heard, for Fusco. It is his first tackle for a loss this season. Hanover Park getting ready to punt it away. Roll it to the outside, looking for space to punt the ball. There it goes, Bevacqua sees it go a bit short. It'll take a Hanover Park bounce and continue to tumble. See if we can get over to the 15. It'll be brought down eh, right around that 17-yard line. So another deep field, but... Both teams have proven that it doesn't really matter where the field position starts. They can rip off some big plays and some massive runs. And that's what the Herd did last drive as they had an 18-yard pass to the end zone as well as a 46-yard rush. One by Hernando, the rush, and of course the pass was from Miniter to Fusco. Or, I'm sorry, to Zamba. Fusco just made the big play to set up the punt. 
And again on the year, only 45 yards in the air for Ben Miniter, but yeah, he can add another 18 and a touchdown to his resume here. They've taken down Lenape Valley, Morris Catholic, and Madison so far this season. Hanover Park have taken down Milburn, Kittitsini, and Madison as well. Madison, their only common opponent, have not earned a victory so far this season. As no, there was a penalty on the play, so Hanover Park ends up back with the ball, but it's taken away immediately. Picked off in the air right around the 20 yard line, and then knocked out of bounds. Well, so Hanover Park tried to take advantage of a penalty that was committed on that play, and instead it's Ian Redzapajic who's able to pick it off out of midair. And Hanover Park now turned the ball over. And it's their first of the game, so now once again, even in turnovers, and that might be bringing some flashbacks of last week. As there was an interception from Borello as a part of four turnovers from the Hanover Park Hornets. So I was certainly expecting them to play a little bit more cleanly in today's game. Let's see if they can straighten things back up. A gift to field position again at that 40 yard line. Wing T position now coming up as they send a sweep from the outside. Finding room on the edge. Hernando runs into a big wall of defenders and is muscled over by Mike Farrell, 6'4", 210 pounds. The outside linebacker was right there to stop Hernando for no gain. Both these sides seem really prepared to stop that outside run game after giving up big runs earlier in this contest of 45 plus yards. Miniter might have to throw the ball a little bit more than he's used to. But again, as he showed earlier when they were in the run zone, he is more than capable of doing that. Big receiver of Justin Brenfleck over on the outside as again, they try to rumble up the middle. And they'll pick up about two on the ground. This time coming from the number 23 of Ian Redzapajic. Redzapajic can do it all as it looks like they'll send him out as well as the 26 of Mamadi. And they'll get a couple of new fresh legs in in the backfield. Minute are taking a look at the outside. Bevacqua an option. And Zamba starting off in the back. Yeah, there he goes. I'm like, what is Zamba doing in the backfield? Now he sets up at the tight end over on the right side. One tailback, two different receivers. Miniter looks back for the play fake, tries to find Zamba, now heaves one down the middle of the field and is picked off again. Another turnover in this contest. And who is it this time but Asmir Parks. Face, or rather a little stiff arm action over at the 50. The Hanover Park fans want a flag, but I think it was just the continued momentum and Asmir Parks. No, it was Joseph Tentawi, okay with the interception. So I thought that was Parks over there. It looked like a seven to me from the distance, but now as he's coming in closer, it is Joseph Tentawi. As these two teams that typically play it clean in this contest, uh, now having a little bit of trouble out here, both with a couple of turnovers. So Mininer today now is one for three with a touchdown and a pick. Hanover Park have it back at midfield with under two minutes left to go. Barella with a beautiful play fake, but he is met in the middle as he's able to pick up just two yards, but that could have easily been a loss for him. The majority of the Hornets yardage so far in today's game have come from Asmir Parks and that 50 yard rip that he had a little bit earlier for the touchdown. So again, that was Joseph Tintawi with the interception. Brings them back to midfield. Now the defense shuffling around for the herd. Hanover Park with Parks in the backfield. Three receivers off to the left side. Barella's gonna run it again. Finds a little bit of an opening between the left tackle and the guard. And he's brought down around that 42 yard line. Gain a seven. And it'll make it a very short third down to go. We're all tied up at seven with just under 70 seconds left here in the first quarter. As now they actually send him back to the 43, so he picked up six on the ground. And Hanover Park, I wanna see if they go to the passing game here. Two receivers on either side. Borello now finding one up the middle. No, instead they go with their favorite, the quarterback run. They say he got to the 38 yard line. And now another official is saying that he was brought down short of the 40. 
So it'll be a fourth down at the 41. So we got two, he's short of the first down. Hanover Park certainly don't want to get stopped on fourth again. And actually, almost the exact same spot. They still go from the shotgun set, four receivers. Park's the lone setback. And alone at the bottom of your screen is Kevin Lepardos. He's being covered by Connor Higgins, the 5'11", 155 pound corner. Now they send Parks to the outside. They're gonna have an empty set. Trying to run up the middle, Barillo leaps and he's in there at the 37 yard line. As he picks up four on the ground and that's enough for Hanover Park first down. So the clock not running, and now it's going. And that should end the first quarter. So what a first quarter of action between these two sides. We're all tied up at seven. We'll flip the field. A lot of turnovers, a lot of big runs, a lot of scoring. Let's see what the second quarter has for us here on Morris Celtic Sports. Hundreds of both synthetic turf and natural grass sports fields for youth and recreational levels, all the way up to the highest standards and requirements of the NCAA. Our goal with every project is to provide our customers with exceptional workmanship, extraordinary service, and professional integrity while constructing a superior product that you can enjoy for years to come. Visit athleticfieldsofamerica.com. All right, quarter number two. We're knotted up at seven apiece. A lot of turnovers on both sides. A fumble and an interception from the herd and an interception for Hanover Park as this second quarter brought to you by the Office Tavern and Grill. On game days, join them before or after the game and enjoy 20% off of food when you wear your Hornets gear. And also brought to you by Reservoir Tavern, brought to you by Bev Aqua's Reservoir Tavern. The Reservoir Tavern is a family-owned business since 1936. Sandover Park looking for parks on the outside. There's a flag in the backfield as he jukes ahead. We'll see what the launcher is for. Join them from great pizza, food and drinks, Tuesdays through Saturdays to watch live stream games and try some of the best pizza in New Jersey. And of course, our player of the game today will be brought to you by Bev Aqua's Reservoir Tavern. So we have a hold going against Sandover Park. And they'll have to march back over to the 48 yard line. So longer field for them to work with again with that run heavy offense just 10 seconds into the second quarter of action. So first down and 20, let's see what they have in the playbook. They haven't used a Milo yet who's in the near side slot. Two receivers at the top of your screen. Borello looks back to pass, scrambles, now runs over towards the line of scrimmage, fires by the sideline, and ooh, almost out of the, or in and out of the hands of Malnati, another very dangerous pass for him. As he's now five for, or rather two for five so far in this contest with the interception. So playing it a little fast and loose with the football currently. It was a challenging play though, running over to that outside and trying to find Tantawi, the receiver, over along the end. And now it looks like there was a flag on the other side of the football. So Hanover Park gonna be moving. And how far are they gonna go? What, what did they give him, pass interference? I didn't see the signal. As now they're gonna get first down in about seven, so I didn't see the official down on the field. But suddenly, Hanover Park now has the ball in the 35-yard line. All right, so a big gift for them. I think it is going to be pass interference. Now they give it to Parks. Parks is mauled right at the line of scrimmage and marks for the second time. Asmir Parks is stopped for no gain. So his rushes of 20, 0, 0, and 50 for a touchdown. So it's been a little bit boomer bust right now for the Hanover Park offense. Let's see if they mix that up a little bit now on second and seven with the three receivers down low. Closest one to us is Jack Kovacs who has a reception today. Pitch, Parks, tries to get around two defenders and is wrapped down behind the 40 yard line. That's Bevacqua. 
making him pay, and there's been nowhere to go for Asmir Parks on his last three carries. So Parks loses three on the play. As Bev Aqua picks up his second tackle for a loss this season, third and 10. Hanover Park probably gonna get this ball up in the air. Two safeties deep in this base 3-4 defense on the herd side over on the left. Hanover Park scored just a minute and 30 seconds into this game, forced a couple of turnovers, and they haven't scored on either of them so far. Let's see if they change it on this drive. Brello drops back from the shotgun set. They send four, fires over Tentawi, and incomplete. He had Kovacs open a little deeper, but he was looking for Joe Tentawi, and that's not gonna be enough, and I think Hanover Park will just try to pin him deep here. And this stop from Mountain Lakes is brought to you by Morris Airport Express Limo. They would like to shout out the Mountain Lakes Herd for all of your transportation needs in the tri-state area. Morris Limo was driven to excellent, oh, I love that. To have your shout out read on air during a future Herd football game, email ads at herdalumni.org. Again, that is Morris Airport Express Limo. So they'll try to help transport Mountain Lakes here to the end zone for the second time in this game as Hanover Park will look to punt them deep. Mike Farrell, floaty end over end kick. Let's see if he gets some spin. Rolls over to the end zone. It looks like they'll be able to down it well inside the 10 yard line. That's what they'll do. As it's picked up by Nick Vasilino. And once again, Mountain Lakes will have a long field and Hanover Park fail to score after a turnover. Well, this is easily the most difficult test for either side so far this season. Both of these teams have, have played some decent opponents, but nobody that's been as good. These are two of the three undefeated teams left in the American Gold Division, the other one being Caldwell, and we all know how good that they've been. They haven't lost in like two, three years. These two teams trying to keep pace. One of them will come out of it with one loss. Trying to hand it off to the outside. Hanover Park ready for it, a gain of about two on the ground. As a quick rush ahead by Malmati, it doesn't bear much fruit. Yeah, the big issue here is, I mean, both teams, I mean, for either side, is <laughs> both teams just have really good defenses. And their offenses are good. I mean, we talked about over 200 yards on the ground per game from Mountain Lakes. Hanover Park with a more balanced offense does a nice job, over 300 yards a game. As now they're sending one running on the outside, gets across the line of scrimmage, keeps on going, and forced out of bounds, and all oh, the flag flies. So Hernando able to get nine on the ground, and I think they're gonna call Hanover Park for a late hit, so they should be getting some more, unless they saw a hold before that. And it is a personal foul, oh no, it's a face mask, they said brought the Hernando down. So the defense not helping themselves out, reaching a little too high on the tackle. As Mount Lake's gonna pick up a couple of more here. Nine minutes and 20 seconds left to go here in the first half of the contest. Zach Smolin hanging out with you here at Hanover Park High School in East Hanover, New Jersey for a big division rivalry game. They give it over to the outside. Hanover Park swarming over and right by the line of scrimmage, maybe picking up one is Red Zapodzik. As he didn't have a ton of space, he now only has five yards on three carries today. And I'll bring up a second down and nine. And you gotta love the way that both teams have been able to seal out that outside run really for the majority of this game. They're able to pick up the ball carrier. The wing tee is big in terms of misdirection, but Hanover Park certainly well prepared for it as they play them almost every year as divisional opponents. They set him down, Hernando in motion. Miniter hands it off up the middle, nowhere to go. Ball was loose and dancing. Outside of the outside of the sideline is Coach Fulton, and they've got it. Hanover Park had it at the bottom of the pile. Let's take another look at that one because I didn't see the ball come out initially, but Finn Kenny picks it right up for the fumble recovery. Yeah, and there it is. And you can watch Coach Fulton just leaping and jumping for joy over on the left. He's one of the most expressive coaches that you'll see. 
He he loves, I mean, not that the other coaches don't, because they do. He loves this team. He's fun to talk to before the games. He's very passionate about his unit year in and year out. He always keeps this a fun and entertaining team to cover. And we're always excited to be here, really, for both these teams on more Sussex Sports. So after the turnover, here comes Borello up the middle, and he's able to pick up a big chunky yardage, about five yards on the ground for Borello, and gets halfway to the first down marker. Hanover Park have forced three turnovers. A Tintawi interception, a Borello fumble recovery, and a fumble recovery by Finn Kenny, household names, of course. Some of those big time players that they rely on. And now they're creeping ever so closer to the end zone. They got the ball now on the 33. Parks in motion. They complete the pass on the screen. He's got room to run over the first down marker, but it looks like there's going to be a hold to bring it back. Yeah, we saw the flag fly right around where a block was picked up. So Hanover Park will probably be seeing something like a second and 15 instead of a first down coming up here. As they'll bring P.J. DeMilo back in. It is a hold against Hanover Park. And the penalties and turnovers have certainly been hurting them in this season. I mean, yeah, that was a big play right there. Good execution on the screen and... Just brought back, so now it's going to be a much longer second down situation. Good to see Parks getting involved in the passing game here, too. He's a great option over on the outside. They haven't gone to Michael Farrell just yet, who leads the team with nine catches. P.J. LeMilo leads the team with 105 yards. He had a big play a couple weeks ago against Madison. Oh, my mistake, Kevin Lepardos leads the team, 125 yards. They fire it down the sideline, leads his man, and a little too far. Looking for Jason Grismala, incomplete. So now will be third down and 15. We like the play. Borello, I think, maybe panicked a little bit that time. Seeing the pocket close in on him, just let it rip. Not a bad ball, but just a little bit too deep for the speedy Grismala. So now it'll be third down and 16 yards to go from way back on the 44 yard line. <laughs> Man, can Mount Lake stop them from scoring again off a turnover right around midfield? Let's see if they can get it done. Again, base three, four defense, four wide receivers set. Marco Zamba is covering the receiver at the top of your screen. I believe that's Laparnos. Borello drops back, has five options. Looking deep, fires over the middle, and it's swatted out of the way. Once again, Ian Redzapodzic able to sniff out a ball right away. And let's look at Redzapodzic again from that safety position. So Borello again with the five options that he has right here to try to advance it. He looks over the middle, and you can't see it on the left side of your screen just yet, but he had his man, and Red Zapodzic was about five yards away, sprinted in a la Troy Palomalu, and was able to cut that one down, and forced Hanover Park to punt again. They have not scored on a turnover, despite forcing three of them this game. And that makes it a solid 14 for them this year. Farrell the punt. And this one goes way deep. Back over along the 10, fair catch is made and by Bevacqua and a long field again to go for Mountain Lakes. Well, if you're a fan of defense, this is the game for you. There's been a couple of big plays, but I mean, you take them away and neither team has been able to move the ball effectively at all. In the air, on the ground, nowhere to go. Excellent job by defensive backs and the defensive line alike. And that's why we find ourselves deadlocked in a 7-7 contest. So let's see what Hector Lopez and company can do here defensively for Hanover Park because they're going to have to stop Mountain Lakes yet again who will be receiving the second half kickoff. Limiting penalties will be big as well. They hand it off over on their left side and they rumble ahead again of about two. And that's picked up by Aiden Malnati. Malnati now has 13 yards on the ground on five carries. Again, not a lot of movement of this football. They only have one gain over 10 yards, and it's for 46. But besides that, 2-2-0-9, 1-3-1, 3-4, 2 2 A lot of short runs 
for Mountain Lakes. And of course, the three turnovers, the pick and the couple of fumbles. Minitor fires outside and Zamba and a bit of a miscommunication. He seems a little bit frustrated on that play. He saw Marco Zamba go with that little quick route. I think he was looking for a hitch and go on Grismala and Minitor thought that he was running the out route. Zamba had plenty of space in front, but we're unable to find him over there on the outside. So now they'll send Zamba out as one of their stretch receivers. Some of you don't see too often. Three receivers set. Uh, set up for the run blitz at Sandover Park. They look over for the outside. Make one man miss. Reds a Pajic. Ends up right around the 20-yard line. Did he get enough for the first? No. Only made it to about the 18. And it will be another fourth down for Mountain Lake. So they send Reds a Pajic flying. He's able to pick up about six. And Mountain Lake's looking like they're going to set up to punt. Yeah, what a game it's been so far for these defenses. I mean, both these teams love to run the ball. I mean, you know that, especially if you've been watching Mountain Lakes as long as I have. Or probably, if you're watching this game, you've been watching them for even longer. That's their bread and butter, and Hanover Park's been right there to stop them. I'm excited to punch, uh, crunch the numbers and see what the halftime stats spit out because we have not seen a lot of big gains today, and I want to see what it is with and without those two big rushes that these teams have. Halfway through the second quarter, this one is aired up. Right over along the 50-yard line, he's going to let it bounce. And Lepanos will watch it trickle and roll back over to the 44. So that's where Hanover Park will pick up the ball. Hanover Park are playing here at their home stadium. And the office tavern and grill in East Hanover wants to be the Hornets' home restaurant. On game days, join them before or after the game. Enjoy 20% off of food when you wear your Hanover Park Hornets gear. Come in and enjoy their 40 beers on tap, delicious food, and their outdoor patio. They can't wait to see you. Go Hornets. Big shout out to the Office Tavern and Grill, to anybody that's watching there right now. As the Hornets will come back, I mean, neither team has been at a shortage in terms of you know, drives or possessions but it's either been stalling out punts or turnovers for both these teams. They hand it off, looking for Parks, trying to run it up the middle. He gains one, maybe two, as he is hauled down by Cosmo Fusco, who, I mean, he's a tough man to get around at any point in the field. One of the two defensive ends in this 3-4 scheme as Parks is able to pick up two. Hanover Park have rushed the ball with Three different ball carriers, Philippone, Parks, and Borello. Only have two completed passes to Kovacs and Tentawi. Speaking of Tentawi, goes in motion to the near side slot. They give it off to Parks. Parks looking on the outside, stutter steps, and is able to shimmy his way through across midfield. Brings him down while well, almost at the 50-yard line at the opposing 49. Gain is six on the ground for Parks. And it'll be a second down in... Actually, they have him a little bit farther, so maybe that ball spot at the very beginning wasn't enough. Oh, so they'll have a third down and three coming up. Picked up five on the ground. Again, back. Borello. And tackle. It looks like he's right on the line again, or did they have him short? It was Bivakwa to bring him down, and yes, he's just enough for the first down. So Joey Borello on his ninth carry of the game picks up another first down on the ground for his side and pumping up some of the younger players over on the bench for Hanover Park. We're seeing a padless player pumping his fist in the air. Let's see if we got him. Is he on the line? Well, we'll check him out later. Here's Borello. Tries to complete a pass over the middle. He does so. Kovacs dives over the 40. Gets about halfway there, but there is a flag on the play. Once again, Coach Fulton is out there. He's trying to figure out what's going on here. And it looks like it's going to be another hold, and they're going to send Finn Ketty out to the offensive line. As Luke Benetta will go back over to the bench. So I think, you know, if I had to make a guess, he's probably the one guilty of the holding. And they'll send Hanover Park back yet again. They've got around four minutes left to score here. And they will have to give the ball back to Mountain Lakes at the second half. 
So that'll be a first down and 20. So that negates the Kovacs reception. They got him about halfway to the first down marker. As here's Borello, airs one out, looking for Kovacs on the side. A lot of hand fighting there. Oh, he did see a good amount of pushing and shoving coming from Brenfleck, but ultimately no laundry was thrown on the field, so the pass will just be incomplete. Well, they tried to go back to the well for Kovacs. He seems to be the favorite target today. After only having one catch so far this year for 19 yards, he's got one reception for two yards on two targets today. Second down and 20 for the Hornets. Mount Lynx has had a stalwart defense save the 50-yard touchdown run from Asmir Parks. Otherwise, they've been immaculate today. Very few first downs for Hanover Park. A lot of stops in the air and with the run as well. Hanover Park's been the same way, though, defensively as they try to give it to Philippone. Philippone stopped back behind the line of scrimmage from Fusco and Zamba working together to stop him for no gain, and it'll be third down and 20 now. And you really have to be impressed with the way that this 3-4 defense has been able to stop the run. They only have the three down linemen of Fusco, Zamba, and Trey Schneider. Actually, this time they'll have somebody else as a down. It's Chris Ramos, it's looking like, that they'll have over on that right end, or that left end, pardon me. Third down and 20. Three down defensive linemen and eight defensive backs set and ready to go. Well, a couple of linebackers, but it looks like they might drop back in coverage. Bevacqua, though, comes in on the blitz from the outside. They get a solid block over from Filippone. Now Borello's going to run, and he's taken out. Gain of just two yards. Marco Zamba found him the whole way, and fourth down and a mile coming up. Not a lot of room to run for Borello, and Hanover Park's going to have to punt it yet again. Neither team can move this football at all. And it's not like the offense has been bad. I mean, they're getting some good blocks. They're mowing through. It's just that the defense has been so spectacular for both the Herd and the Hornets in today's contest that even after the two quick scores in the beginning of the game, it, we might only see one more score the remainder of this contest unless we see some serious halftime adjustments. Here's Farrell, booming kick. Over the 20 yard line, picked up by Bevacqua. Shimmies from side to side, beats a couple of defenders, and after numbers five and six, not the numbers they're wearing, but the number of tackler going through gets over there. They'll pick it up around the 30 yard line with about two minutes left to go. Well, how weird is this game? I mean, we started off with two quick scores and on three big plays a 50 yard rush by Parks. A 46-yard rush from Hernando, and then an 18-yard connection between Miniter and Zamba inside the red zone, and then since then, nothing. <laughs> since then, we, I don't think we've had a play of over nine yards. Yeah, we haven't. Biggest one since then, Hernando had a nine-yard rush. Outside of that, everything five or under. Man in motion, Miniter drops back, fires to the outside, completes the pass, Find Zamba, and he'll roll forward for about six yards. It's his second complete pass of the game, and both happen to the exact same target. So he's now got two catches for 35 yards in the touchdown. Or, pardon me, 23 yards in the touchdown. He's about halfway to the first down marker. He did get out of bounds, so the clock will stop as we'll see what kinds of plays they have in their two minute drill. Now Zamba will work on Tentawi down on the closer end of the field. Another man in motion, minute or to the outside, looking for Zamba deep and charging in and bringing him down is Hector Lopez. Oh my goodness. And the thing with Hector Lopez is he is not the biggest, but man oh man can he run and watch the way that he just plows in and brings down minute. So you'll see Lopez here at the beginning of the play. Center stepping, spying the quarterback, and then he just goes off to the races and gives Miniter absolutely nowhere to go. 
as they lose about seven on the sack. Second sack of the game, the other one came, or my mistake, it's the first sack of the game. And Hector Lopez, as usual, getting the job done for his team. Let's check out what he's done so far this season. So coming into the game, he had 30 tackles, two interceptions, a forced fumble, four tackles for a loss, and a sack. I mean, if that's not superstar, I don't know what is. Between him and Joey Philippone, I mean, they can almost run a defense by themselves. But, of course, Hanover Park have a beautiful unit with all 11 players that are at the field on the field at the same time working together, those two. And their big numbers, just a reflection of how hard this group works as a unit. So now Minitor, pitch to the outside, really their only option. See if they can make something happen as they lost seven on the ground and on the sack, and they pick it up right back to the line again. Right, it's, it's Jordan Hernando. Picking up about seven, brought out by Jason Grismala. He's got 16 rushes on his last two carries. Hernando's really been the guy for them so far this half, as he's been this season. Hernando, 27 rushes for 204 yards. First and then second on the team and four TDs coming into the contest. That also leads the squad. So that'll be fourth down and 10, and they'll be forced to punt it again. Kevin Leparno steep to receiver on the 40-yard line, looking for a big return. Hanover Park looking to block the kick. They nearly get it as this floats up right around midfield. Leparno lets it drop in front, and it'll roll. It'll stay at the 41-yard line before it's down by Holden Gillespie. So Hanover Park with one more crack at it here in the first half. I mean, neither team has really taken advantage of the plethora of opportunities that their defenses have provided them. Hanover Park will have to travel 59 yards in about 80 seconds in order to retake the lead that they procured a minute and a half into this contest. So Borello and company back on the field. Borello so far today, just two completed passes. On nine tries and only for nine yards. He's got plenty of weapons. And we haven't really seen him try to go Laparnos' way so far today. Watch him at the top of your screen. Let's see if he looks that direction. Fakes the handoff, now scrambles off to his left side, looking for an option, fires toward the sideline, and about five yards in front of the legs of Kobach's, another one incomplete, he's now two for 10 today. Now he did have one complete in the middle of the field that was brought back on a penalty, but besides that, just had a tough time with his accuracy today. And I mean, part of it is the smothering blanket that is the herd defense. It just seems odd coming off a game where he completed 15 to 19. 112 left to go, 59 yards to the end zone. Four receivers now plus Philippone. They complete it to Philippone behind the 40 yard line and he's brought down out of bounds at the 45. Pick up a four in the air for Philippone. So that'll bring that percentage up a little bit more. Hanover Park were certainly looking for a little bit more than that. But now they've got a third and six and maybe after a first down they could start to pick up some momentum. There's just nowhere to run after the herd. I mean, their rally tackling has really been something else. You complete a pass, you beat one defender, and there's five guys to meet you anywhere you turn. Hope you're enjoying the action here on Morris Sussex Sports in the American Gold Division of the Super Football Conference. Right ahead is Borello, and he's got enough for a first down, speeding ahead as he's able to pick up six yards on the ground. So now they'll pick it up at the 49 yard line. Clock continues to run. Haven't seen any timeouts get used so far by Hanover Park. So they're gonna have to make something happen quickly. Over from the 49 yard line, they got the 10 that they needed to flip the field. And it looks like right now they're just gonna let the clock wind down and then call a timeout. I don't think Hanover Park is gonna try for a long drive here despite having all their timeouts. 
Oh, I see why. They called him just short there, and now the marker is a fourth down marker instead of the first. So he only picked up five on the ground. And I don't know if they're going to decide to send the punt team out or not. So Hanover Park called their first timeout of this contest. And if you need a timeout after this game to kick back and relax after a beautiful evening of watching more Sussex sports, check out the Office Tavern and Grill. Get together with some friends, especially on game days. Join them before or after the game and enjoy 20% off food. Check out their 40 beers on tap, delicious food, and their outdoor patio. Again, it's a gorgeous night tonight here in East Hanover, New Jersey. No reason not to go out there. Oh, yeah, look, it's 63 degrees. No breeze, a little humid, but that's helping trap some of the heat in the air. So it's always a good time to check out the office, Tavern and Grill. 16.3 seconds left to go. They'll have Michael Farrell kick it away and hope that the punt can bleed enough clock out to try to end this first half. Neither team has scored since the first quarter. And now Mountain Lake's going to uh, call a timeout, and we'll call a timeout here on Morris Sussex Sports. My fish froze. Mine's so hot, my sneakers melted. Rooms with different temperatures? That means your HVAC system is outdated and wasting energy. At ICS, we'll install an energy efficient system that provides a constant flow of clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature in every room. You could save money each month, and the price we quote is the price you'll pay. Get a quote today. See why we say ICS for a all right, so after back-to-back -back timeouts, we're all set and ready to go. Farrell to kick and Beth Aqua to receive. We've said that a lot today. As they fake it, now they go to the outside. And, well, I'll tell you what, I wasn't expecting this either. As Kovacs leaps over his man and is forced out of bounds at the 30-yard line. I'll tell you what, no idea that was coming. Kovacs picking up 16 on the ground and gets out of bounds. Now Hanover Park in striking distance. Actually, I don't think that they, oh no, all right. They did stop the clock here. I was wondering what was going on. Now it's running again. Hanover Park's back on the, I don't know why the clock's running. Yeah, they've got to, they've got to push that back. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to rewind this here. Hanover Park should have at least 10 more seconds left on the clock. Because I thought he went out of bounds. Colts Fulton is now out. Talking to the officials about why there's only nine seconds left on the clock. Yeah, because they called the timeout and they had everybody go over to the sideline. So either, if, either way, I thought he went out of bounds. Even if he didn't go out of bounds, they called the timeout almost immediately. So they should be given a little bit more time to go 30 yards down the field. I mean, I can't imagine why they would call the play and then just let the clock run down. I mean, it doesn't make sense to risk a fake to let the clock wind down the rest of the way, especially with the momentum that they're picking up. All right, so, well, after the explanation, they only have nine seconds to go, so this should be the last play of the half. I might change the play call that they had expect. Yeah, they're only gonna be able to run one, maybe two plays here. Two if they can get out of bounds. Barello in the backfield. They send four in on the blitz and the defense collapses on top of him and he's down at the 40 yard line. Zamba with a big time sack and that'll end the half. Well, after a confusing series of events, 
We're all tied up at seven apiece. There's been a bevy of turnovers, a couple of big plays, and spectacular defense. And after one half of football, we're tied at a touchdown apiece. Here are more Sussex Sports. We're going to cut on over to halftime. But when we come back, we'll have a thriller of a second half coming right at you once again here on more Sussex Sports. We'll see you on the other half. Sport Acura of Denville, we know you have a lot of choices when it comes to buying your new Acura. So why shop with dealers that don't value your time or play games with you? Why not choose a dealership that always values their clients' time and has set a benchmark in customer service for nearly 40 years? Make it easy. Choose Autosport Acura of Denville. For sales, service, and a relationship you can rely on, make it easy and choose Autosport Acura of Denville. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? Join me. The part. Dance team. Let's hear it for the part dance team. Come on, you can do better than that. for the Park Dance Team. Next we have the Cheer Dance Team.
And now I'm going to appeal for your halftime enjoyment to have the Park's Golden Horn Marching Band presenting their 2023 production, The Gathering. The band is run onto the field by drum majors Nick Gatsonis and Anna Larson. The band is under the direction of Joseph Skinner and David Finkelstein. Tonight they will perform songs from this year's production, Rihanna by Fleetwood Mac and Bewitched, Bothered and Bewildered by Ella Fitzgerald. The band will perform at four competitions around New Jersey. They will also host the annual Hornets at the High competition here at HP Hornets Stadium on Saturday, September 30th. We wish them all the best of luck. Now please relax and enjoy the 2023 edition of your Hornet Golden Hornet Marching Band. setting up. Please support the Snack Jack. It raises money for the senior class.
That is good. Who installed the system? ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Attention homeowners. Get ready to meet Brandy Brosian of Compass Real Estate. Brandy wants to sell your home with ease and maximize your return on investment, providing a personalized approach that includes deep cleaning, to staging, to professional digital exposure. Brandy's innovative approach provides so much added value that you and your home will feel the VIP difference. Don't wait another day. Reach out to Brandy Brosian today. Contact Mary Camito for an auto quote today. DNA Landscaping. We service all of your lawn care needs. We are a full service lawn care and landscaping company providing traditional needs such as lawn maintenance, planting, trimming, mulch, tree removal, and stump grinding, as well as landscape design and snow removal. With over 10 years of experience serving Morris and Sussex counties, both residential and commercial properties, call DNA Landscaping at 973-223-5845. For all of the perks that come with working here, I would say that the most valuable thing WIS offers is freedom. The freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. Introducing Gemstone Orthodontics, where brilliance meets compassion in crafting your perfect smile. 
With a board-certified orthodontist, Dr. Patel, your smile is in expert hands. Our commitment to the latest advancements in technology bring precision and comfort to your orthodontic experience. Whether you are considering braces or liners for yourself or for your child, call today at 908-852-9899 or visit us at www.gemstoneortho.com to schedule a complimentary consultation. At Paint Puri, we don't just sell paint and paint accessories. We eat, sleep, and breathe it. Not actually, though. That would be weird. With our huge selection of incredible Benjamin Moore paints, choosing the right color and finish can be a big decision. Luckily, with over 40 years of experience, we can answer any question you have. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIYer, we have all the tools you need to get the job done right the first time. Ready for your next project? Visit us at Paint Puri or shop online at paintpuri.com. Hmm. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. The County College of Morris Foundation Annual Golf Classic is coming to Brook Lake Country Club in Florham Park on Monday, October 16th. Golfers will enjoy 18 holes of golf on one of New Jersey's premier courses between a barbecue lunch spread and a buffet dinner. Registration begins at 11 a.m., giving golfers access to the locker room, driving range, and lunch in the clubhouse before our 12.30 shotgun start. At 5 p.m., enjoy an open bar cocktail reception prior to our 6 p.m. dinner and awards program. Proceeds benefit CCM student athletes. Register online at ccm.edu slash foundation slash golf. The green wave isn't just what we call ourselves. It represents all we are called to. We strive for excellence in mind, body, and spirit. We put in the work in programs that test us, guide us to the colleges we pursue. We live true to putting others before ourselves. The right to take it off for the Hornets, Joey Barella. Again. All right, welcome back to the action here on More Sussex Sports. And well, we start off with an illegal procedure. The kickoff out of bounds as returning here will be Mountain Lakes. So the Mountain Lakes herd coming out here, not doing a lot. Let's check that first half from them. Only 103 yards on 20 plays. Now the 20 plays is great, but they've only been able to run those 20 plays because they turned the ball over three times. So they have the interception and the two forced fumbles as they come through. They only have 13 yards in the air. Not a lot on the grounds, and yet Hanover Park hasn't been able to do too much either so far in today's game. As we welcome George Muha to the broadcast. George, how you doing? As Ben Miniter drops back, fires over to the side, and Zamba gets knocked out. Oh my goodness. That was quite the play there, just a little back crack hit. 
and Zamba is forced to drop the ball, and now it'll be second down and 10. George, welcome back. The last time that you were here with me in Hanover Park, my tire had busted open, and uh, I'm glad that that didn't happen today. You're just here to hang out and have a good time at your alma mater. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a big game in Hanover Park. You know, 7-7, a huge game for both teams, and... You know, I uh, figured I'd come in on the air here with the air. Both undefeated. Jason Caldwell, it's another fumble, but it is picked up in the backfield by Hernando. And you know what, George? This has been the issue today. There's been three fumbles now, as so we'll take another look at this one. And it's just been Butterfingers. It's not like it's wet out there today. And so watch here. It didn't notice the fumble immediately. But watch here on the transition in the backfield. Minner looks to hand it off, and then the ball just squirts loose. Hanover Park, fortunately for Mountain Lakes, unable to pick it up this time. Third and 12, they lose two on the fumble. Firing over towards the sideline, looking for Zamba, and he dives, and it's incomplete. So it'll be third down and 12, or fourth down and 12 coming up. George, this is a huge game. I mean, this American Gold Division is stacked. Three undefeated teams. You got Mountain Lakes, you got Hanover Park, and of course you got Caldwell, who hasn't lost since I joined uh, more Sussex Sports. Uh, so this is a huge game for these two sides. And honestly, you really couldn't ask for a more even matchup. Both teams with stout defenses, and it showed today. Yeah, well, if you're Hanover Park, you got a couple teams looming. One is Mountain Lakes. Yep. You got to get past Mountain Lakes, and then when you have them, you got Caldwell sitting back. If you're Cal if you're Mountain Lakes. You know, it's kind of a funny division. Most of these teams are group two teams. M Mountain Lakes is a group one team. They went all the way to the group final last yeah. year. Yes, this is their division, but when it comes to the postseason, you know, the they don't really have much to worry about as far as group two teams. No, they certainly don't, but they do like to test their mettle against some of these squads, especially a red-hot Hanover Park team, as this will bounce right around the 35-yard line, take another Hornet hop and go over to the 35. So now it'll be first and 10 for Hanover Park. George, neither team can really move the ball. It's been a, like a classic, I mean, they're playing like the classic Cleveland Browns, the Mountain uh, Lakes herd. They're in the same jerseys, <laughs> and they're three yards in a cloud of dust and with a stout defense. Uh, so it's been an old school, grinded out type of football game. Some we're not really used to seeing from Hanover Park who likes to air it out, spread offense, and they're tearing them right back down to earth with this defense and run game. I, I know the Mountain Lakes alumni. I know they're watching. I know they're not going to love that. that uh, uh, Cleveland Browns reference, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> well, what about the 50s Cleveland Browns, though? That's what I'm saying. They're playing classic old school when they were running away with the NFL championships. Here we go with the direct snap. Over to the outside, they have Kovacs on the direct snap. Tried something a little different, and he's out at the 40-yard line. Well, George, you're here, and we see our biggest play in about, I don't know, 20 minutes as they go from the 39 over to the opposite end of the field's 40. Hanover Park first down after a 21-yard gain from Jack Kovacs. Yeah, and they're moving fast. We'll go back, maybe we get back to gameplay here. Great play there. Kovacs with a big hustle. He now has 37 yards on the ground, and they give it right back to him. Pushes a man out of the way, over to the 35, to the 30. Now he jukes to the inside. Kovacs with a man to beat, slips another tackle. What a rush by Jack Kovacs. The 40 yards on the ground, shook off the entire herd defense, and is in there for six. Yeah, just an amazing play. They set it up on the, the play before, and Kovacs did a great job juking and running around, looking for blocks, making some good moves there. Check that out. This kid, can this kid can play? He's got some wheels. Woo, George, I don't know who's more tired after that, either Jack or myself. I, <laughs> woo, that one came from deep in the diaphragm. As here we go for the extra point, this touchdown sc uh, scored by Hanover Park, brought to you by our friends at the Office Tavern and Grill. On game days, join them before or after the game and enjoy 20% off of food when you wear your Hornets gear. Come in and enjoy their 40 beers on tap, delicious food and outdoor patio. They can't wait to see you at the Office Tavern and Grill in East Hanover. Go Hornets, as their extra point is good. Hanover Park now are up 14 to seven. George only scored six points last week. Offense looking a little bit better, even though they've needed two big plays to do so. Yeah, I talked to uh, Coach Fulton after the game last week. You know, tough game, not happy with the performance. You know, and, and I talked to a lot of, you know, the Hanover Park side of things. It's just like, you know, I don't know what it was. They went up all the way up to Kittatinny. Kittatinny's, you know, not a world beater this year. Not that they're not bad. They got it. They showed, but, you know, I think Hanover Park thought they were going to go in there rolling. Right. They, they were lucky to get away with a win. And uh, I think, you know, that was a big wake-up call for them. 
So uh, we, we have good for Hanover Park to kind of get ahead here. The big issue for Hanover Park this season has been the turnovers. They fumbled the ball a lot. Borello has an interception in this game, but that hasn't really been the problem. They had four turnovers last week, just one this week, and the defense has three on the other end. The reason they got bailed out last week, George, is because their defense also picked up four turnovers, four interceptions from three different Kittatini quarterbacks. So here we are now in the third quarter, brought to you by Ecola Italian Bistro, known for their homemade pasta and innovative Italian-American cuisine. Ecola has been proudly providing exceptional food and service for over 30 years, located on Route 46 in Parsippany, and open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Come visit Ecola, often imitated, never duplicated. Line drive kick, and for some reason it's hauled in by Billy Barrett, who will hustle over to the outside. It looks like he wanted to try to grab it over his shoulder, make something happen. He's brought down short of the 25. I thought he would let that go a little bit deeper to Bev Aqua and company, but hey, we've seen guys return things uh, for more earlier. I remember in my Bridgewater Rarity game, they had a guy in the second level of the special teams return one for a touchdown. So I guess you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, if you're Coach Fusco, you want to get back on the board. You're not, you, you definitely don't want to let Hanover Park get get rolling here so I expect Mountain Lakes to come answer answer something here in the first half Mountain Lakes only ran 20 plays to the 32 of Hanover Park thanks to a couple of three and outs and three turnovers mixed in as well let's see if they play a little more, more cleanly they try to go ahead with Red Zapogic and he gains two that's his fourth or rather fifth rush of the game for Red Zapogic and now he's up with 13 yards now we're going to make it onto George's uh, Instagram page <laughs> on the Stay Frosty Network. <laughs> that that could be enough. No, that th my own show, George. That, that's what's coming up next. I'm sure I'm it is. I'm sure <laughs> down, that is coming down down the pipeline. All right, so now we've got a second down and eight after a short up the middle run. It's been a lot of single digit rushing yards on these carries for Minotaur and Company, and there is a false start over on the end. Yeah, we mm. saw the flinch by Justin Brenfleck. And that should push him back a little bit more, unless Hanover Park flinched first. No, I think that is on Mountain Lakes, and uh, and Mountain Lakes a little little frustrated there, a little little jar in there with the Hanover Park defenders. I mean, I, you can't really blame them. They forced a bunch of turnovers. Hector Lopez doing his job. I love where his family sits too. I always see them when they come in. They sit right next to the door. They wave and smile. And he's got family in the Philippines that watch almost all of his games too. Is that right? Yeah. So <laughs> international audience here on uh, Morris Sussex Sports. Uh, yeah, and he puts on a show for him. That's for sure. Yeah, he's a great linebacker. Great little shifty guy who you know loves to stick people. He's a great kid too. Miniter drops back. Pump fakes over to the side. There's Zamba, and they get back the mm. yardage that they lost. He's brought down around the 28, so they'll gain eight. He's comfortable throwing to him. It's his third reception of the day, and he's the only man that he's completed passes to. I, I, I love Miniter's arm. He's just always so accurate, and on that play, too, like, he didn't, he, he pumped. He, he didn't like what he saw, but got the ball out to him real quick. He's got a nice little zip. Miniter, to me, is like the American Gold Division's version of Chad Pennington, right? <laughs> He's not going to belt the ball down the field, but if, when you need a guy to make clean handoffs and fire those short passes to tight ends, he's going to be the guy to do it. Down set, Hernando in motion. Another play fake. They're looking for Zamba over the middle of the field. Now the defense crashing in, and he just throws it out of bounds as the pass will fly incomplete, looking for Red Zapogic. And that'll be a fourth down and about five to go. So the offense trying something new that time with a couple more pass plays than they're used to in that series. And they're going to punt this one away over to Joseph Tintawi, who in the first half picked up an interception and got Hanover Park back to midfield. Yeah, this is not what I think Mountain Lakes wants to do. They want to move, drive down the field and get points, kicking it back to Hanover Park after that exciting opening for second half uh, drive there. I mean, these are two teams coming into the game that combined allowed 14 points per game, both of them with about seven, as now they fake it. Little rush to the outside across the line of scrimmage, and he does not get enough. They try to run it over to the outside with Brenfleck, and instead he is stopped short of the first down, and Hanover Park have a gift of spectacular field position inside the opposing 30. Yeah, great play by, I love the play call. Hey, let's get a little gutsy here. We're not getting a lot of stuff going with our offense. Let's see what we do with our special teams. Unfortunately, and, and you get the ball on one of your big athletes. Unfortunately, they, they couldn't get it done. Bren Fleck, that's his first rush of the season. He has two receptions for nine yards. Now he can add another six total yards as Hanover Park will pick it up right on the nose of the 30-yard line. 
Well, George, they haven't had, despite the turnovers, this is the best starting field position that they've had today. And you can tell that both coaches are starting to get a little frustrated with the other team's defense. And we know that Hanover Park's got a deep play uh, playbook, so we'll see what kind of trickery that they result to here. They're out of the Wildcat as Kovacs is lined up as the wide receiver. First and 10. And the screen is incomplete to the outside. The whistle blows, so he just led Parks a little bit too much to the outside. Joey Barello is now 3 for 12 on the day after going 15 for 19 last week. Yeah, after Kovac's big run there, I think you want to get the ball in his hands. He's, he's got the hot hand. Figure out how to get the ball in his hands. And trying to run it behind the big right tackle of Luke Reardon. Yeah. Reared in 6'5", 245 pounds. has been opening up all kinds of running room. Hanover Park didn't move the ball in the air last quarter, but they certainly did on the ground. As Borello's going to hustle to the outside this time over to the left, and it'll be stopped for a gain of about one. So we'll have ourselves a third down and very long. Yeah, Hanover Park in that first half still rushed for 121 yards. And, I mean, you can only credit the offensive line really for that because... The passing defense for Mount Lakes has been nothing short of spectacular, as well as their linebacking core. Uh, the, coming into this game, the, the matchup I was really looking for was Luke Reardon on the left tackle and Cosmo Fusco on the other side. You know, they're both big athletic linemen, you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six kids, uh, you know, 230, 240, real athletic, both college prospects. Um, you got to key on them on the line just for the, bat, the game within the game. And they've got them. Rear down the right tackle, blocking Fusco as you thought. He pancakes, uh, brings Ooh, him down to the ground that's... as the pass is incomplete on the 20. It looks like Red Zapodic might have got there a little mm. early, but no flag on the play, and it'll be fourth and 10. And because of where they're at, it looks like they're going to go for it here. I mean, I, you, you can't not. Otherwise, if you punt them, you risk the touchback, and you really only gain a couple of yards, yep. really, and pin this is the, the call. back. So. This is the call. There's yeah. no, no doubt about it. So let's see what they decide to do here. Their bread and butter of their offense, George, is those when they need big yards. It's been those slants in the middle of the field, but we haven't really seen many of them today. They look over to the outside. Three receivers on the near side. Watch P.J. DeMilo in the near side slot. Again, Fusco on Reardon. Reardon with the big block as they fire to the outside, and they look for Lepardos for the first time today, but the pass incomplete. Broken up by Connor Higgins, and it's a turnover on downs for Hanover Park, as once again, this game is well, effectively a stalemate, even though now Hanover Park do have a lead. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. You know, after that first that drive, the start, the start of the second half by Hanover Park, a lot of running, a lot of shifting. Kovacs, get the ball in Kovacs' hand. Let the, let the guy just run, do do his thing. Easier said than done. I'm not well, the coach. Of I mean, you got Fusco, Simpson, <laughs> Stewart at you on the other side right. of the line. Yeah, it's a little difficult to do, and, you know, if anybody's going to make an adjustment, it would be Coach Fusco, right? I mean, this team has been very successful for several years for a reason. Both of these sides really have a lot of deep playoff runs in recent memory. Uh, Hanover Park made it to the sectional final game uh, two years ago against Caldwell. Again, just they don't know how to lose no matter who's coaching that team. Yeah. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how these two teams match up against a team from Western Essex County. Pitch to the outside now, Hernando. Hernando stops short, runs into his own. Wow blocker and he's only able to pick wow a very generous ball spot they give him about three yards on the ground for Hernando it'll be second and seven well he's been the guy yeah I mean Hernando it was a great piece of the puzzle last year in that group group final run and uh, you know a lot of the guys came back yeah and his big brother in the years before Another one to the outside. This time, Red Zapodzik. Red Zapodzik is met low and now wrapped way down as he's stopped right by the line of scrimmage. Nowhere for him to go as he's brought down by Jason Grismala and it'll be third and long. Yeah, great play by Mountain Lakes. Uh, if you watched, they executed all their blocks as Hanover Park did an awesome job pursuing. We were saying in the first half, George, I mean, both teams rally tackling has really been something. The first guy almost never has been able to bring him down, but they slow him just enough that everybody else gets in there and you stop him short for almost no gain. About halfway through the third quarter here, third down and six, Miniter in the single back. Drops back, fires in the flats to the outside to Zamba, and look at that mismatch there too. Zamba is this massive kid standing in there against Joseph Tentawi, he's 165 pounds. Zamba is 210, and yet the defensive back brings him down short of the line of game. Uh, in this game, Zach's speed kills, and, and uh, great, great, defensive play right there he's not, not much Zambo can do no nowhere for him to go and again he's a big guy right there and forced to punt again 
is Mountain Lakes. As Hanover Park doing a great job defending their home turf. And if you want to go over to Hanover Park's home restaurant, check out the Office Tavern and Grill on game days. 20% off food when you wear your Hornets gear. Check them out at East Hanover, the Hanover Park home restaurant. Mm. This will continue to tumble right over around the 20. You know, Paul and I have been planning to go to the Office Tavern and Grill really since last year. But I don't know if he's going to drive all the way from Randolph. You might find me there after the game, though, George. All these places. Uh, I'm getting <laughs> hungry. Uh, e e e Eli in, uh, in oh. over by Mountain Lakes. You that were, place is phenomenal. You were telling me uh, also Bivakwa's Tavern. Uh, uh, the my, Reservoir one of my favorite is one places. of your favorites, too. Oh, the pizza, the meatballs, everything. is, well, And I think they give a, the pizza to the player of the game. Yeah, they do give pizza uh, to the player. So I, I always take I am great. I'm going to put some pads on and run out there. <laughs> Not that I would become the player of the game. I always take great responsibility. For, for, well, well, you played on this field, right? But you told me that you were never the player of the game when you were out here. No, no, no. I was, I, was on the, I was on the field. I don't know if you call what I was doing. Well, but you were, champ you were champion, right? You guys won. You I was on the, the team. So I was part of that. You're the champion. <laughs> the water boy gets the ring too, George. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly why. I got one. Well, they're doing what you like here now. They have Kovacs back in that Wildcat set as he runs it up the middle, pushes through, and he's brought down by Bab Aqua and come. No, he's not, as he kept on running. Oh, my goodness. I thought he was brought down way back there. Instead, Kovacs rushes ahead and up for a first down, but comes up limping as he picks up, I think he got just enough, 10 yards on the ground. Yeah, he got a little, uh, I think maybe a little cramp. You know, we, we don't really see those too much this, this time of year, but it's... Yeah, it's getting a little colder out as now we have the 61 on uh, Mount Lakes holding Gillespie sent to the side. He's going to be tended to on the sideline, yeah, so we'll cut to commercial for now while he's being checked out. Spirit and strength we are called to. Roll wave. I actually used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. I intentionally became an adjunct professor teaching tax, and I also became a Zumba instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both forms of leading and teaching in their own right. Bottom line though, WISP supports my passions. I truly believe that WISP wants me to be the best version of myself, and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here. Jen Basilino of the Kosher Real Estate Group, LLC, is a Morris County top real estate agent and New Jersey Circle of Excellence award winner year over year that takes the time and care to understand your real estate needs and concerns. She's extremely successful in representing clients in selling and purchasing a home, new construction, townhouses, million dollar homes, rentals, and even commercial properties. Call her today at 973-202-2103. Back in action. Thank you, Christina. Pushing all the buttons, doing an excellent job over on our left side as they have the direct snap handoff again. Is it Philip Hone this time? No, it was back to Kovacs. Well, good to see him healthy. Picks up a big chunk, seven yards. George, he's carried the ball five times. That was his first rush that was not for more than 10 yards. <laughs> yeah, just keep giving it to him. He's the hot hand. He's been insane. That's what Fulton's doing, I think. This half, he's got 78 on four carries. He's got 94 for the game as stopped up in the backfield is Barello. They tried to punch it up the middle with him. He gains about one on the ground. He has two carries for two yards as he tries to run behind the big body of Luke Reardon. 4-10 left to go here in the third quarter. Hanover Park scoring quickly at the beginning, just like they did right out of the gate in quarter number one. But they definitely want to score a little bit more against a high-flying offense that they've managed to slow down in Mountain Lakes. There they go again. Borello pushes through, and the entire defense needs to come on in as he's brought down across midfield, gets to the 49. Hanover Park first down, gain of 11 by their quarterback. Yeah, excellent. Moving the chains is the name of the game, and that's if you're uh, if you're on offense in this game, if you're one of these teams that's moving the chains, that's the side you want to be on. I thought the name of the game was football. <laughs> just giving you a hard time. On the outside, they complete the screen to Parks here. They got all kinds of blocks in front of him as he's able to pick up about eight and then off the shoestring tackle, we see a flag come in. So let's see what they got. It should be second down and about two, but we'll have to wait to see what the call was for. I don't may, Maybe a hold down the field, but. Ah, it's on Hanover Park. Yeah, it is. But that's a little odd. It was, that, that flag was way outside, and I don't see any blockers out that way. Yeah, so they'll be punished for it and pushed back. I think they just go back 
to the original line to gain. I mean, if, if the flag is over there, it's a spot foul, and they lose it from there. And Coach Ful I think Coach Fulton is the, the one coach also that I see that spends the most time outside of the lines and in the field. <laughs> you should have seen it before. I hope we save the replay of it. He was running and leaping out on this one play and pointing <laughs> on a fumble recovery. I mean, we, we talk about it all the time because we both know him that well. You know him longer than I do, but we've both known him for several years. And he's just one of the most entertaining and, and just overall just good guy coaches that are out there. He really cares about his team, his players as a whole, and, you know, just wants success for this program year in and year out, and that's what he's delivered really in his tenure. Yeah, he's the, his heart's in it. He's a Par Hills guy, and, you know, as a Hanover Park alum, we, we let him in the gate because, you <laughs> it was know. a he's, smart idea. Yeah, yeah, no, he's been, he's had a great run, got to the, the playoffs a bunch of times, had some great teams, and, and like you said, he has a diverse playbook. You know, he, he really does. does a lot of cool different things with his offense. It's interesting because he's moved from the mics of the Philippones and the, oh, there's Robin waving <laughs> hello, and now she's looking off to the side. That's one thing I like, too, is the fans here at Hanover Park are always the best as Borello will rumble ahead. He gains back the yards that they lost. It'll be second down and 10 as he picks up another two. But I was talking about Mike Borello, Mike Filippone two years ago. Now it's Joey Borello and Joey Filippone. And they have the same last names. They play similar positions, but boy, are they different types of athletes. Yeah. I, I mean, Joey a little bit more on the defensive side. Uh, Filippone, big defensive presence. And then Joey Borello, a little bit more of an accurate passer and an outside rusher, not the big running presence that his older brother was as the game completed outside to Parks. Parks picks up nine, and it'll be third down and one now after the Asmere Parks run and catch. And he's been great. Parks had limited action last year. They really back and forth trying to fill the hole of Mike Filippone. A lot of Mike Barella runs last year. They had Frank Spinelli, who then got injured. Parks got a few carries, was impressive. And now he's come right back in and done a really nice job for his team. As I think they're going to go to that Wildcat again. As you see Joey Borello going to the top of the screen as a receiver and Jack Kovacs to receive the snap. The tailback is going to be Joey Philippone. Three, four receivers set. Kovacs up the middle and he's tripped up in the backfield. And a beautiful shoestring grab there by Nick Feo. First time we've said his name. A senior nose guard. And Hanover Park now with a long fourth down with about three yards to go. Yeah, and I think they're going to go for it. Uh, well, actually, no. Nah, it looks like, like they're going to punt it. With I mean, Farrell, one of the better punters, at least in the division, if not the Super Football Conference. We saw him do it well last year, and he can really pin teams deep. He's not a guy that just picks it up and boots it. He makes a lot of good adjustments with it as well. So he'll know if, how much backspin he needs to put on the ball or the distance he needs to go as he'll punt it from right around his 50. Line drive. It'll bounce in front of Bev Aqua, continue to tumble. Tentawi will pick it up right around the 11. And that's what we're talking about right there. Punt was only about 27 yards, but that's exactly where it needed to land. Yeah, exactly. He's inside. He's, he's right on the 11, 10, 11-yard 11 line. And you're get 90 yards to go when you're on offense that has a hard time getting a has been having a, having a hard time getting a first down is uh, right where you want to put them. Grinding it out has not really been the answer to success in this game, George. We've had three touchdowns. One of them's been for 18 yards, and then the other two were for 50 and 40 yards. So it's been all setting up explosive plays in this game, on all the basic plays in the playbook and little smaller things both defenses have been really prepared and you got to credit both head coaches for getting these teams ready for the contest and speaking of that if you want to get ready for the winter check out Mahon plumbing heating and ac services and they want to shout out the herd football team for local hvac service you can trust Mahan is here for all your needs and to have your shout out read on air during future herd football games email ads at herdalumni.org yeah, great play, Zach, by uh, Mountain Lake. Got a nice 10, 8-yard swing pass play, and uh, that's exactly what they need. So they pick up 8 as I help pay some bills, and it'll be <laughs> second down and about 2 yards to go. Well, yeah, they need their offense to catch fire right here. They need to heat up a little as they've got a long field to go. Minuter, hands off, Red Zapodzik. Runs through the defensive line and now is brought down by Joey Filippone and company. He picks up four on the ground for Red Zapodzik. 
It's his sixth carry. That's been a specialty today. He's been able to eke over and get just enough for those first downs on these short runs. Yeah, that's exactly what Fusco and company want to do is move the chains. And that's what they've got going on. And I love their signs that they have, too. There's a Wu-Tang Clan symbol. They got the <laughs> Jets. They got the TikTok logo. They've got it all going on. I mean, just keeping it creative over on that sideline. Hernando in motion. Minuter looking to the outside. Pass is complete to Brent Fleck. And he's brought down by a whole host of Hornets. Gains about seven in the air down at the 35-yard line. First catch of the game for Brent Fleck. All right, gr great Great play, third play in the row, nice nice yard, just keep, thing, keep the ball moving up the field. Having a good time here at Morris Sussex Sports, and that should be the last play of the quarter here. Unless they want to run one more, there's under 15 seconds left. Mininger down under center, and that's standard wing T formation, they will run one more play. Over to the outside, they hand it off and rumbling over the 40 now. Once again is Aiden Malnati, that's enough for a first, and that'll close things out here in quarter number three. Zach Small and George Muha with you in a thrilling contest here at the Hive at East Hanover High School, or rather Hanover Park High School here in East Hanover, New Jersey. We'll be right back with a big fourth quarter of action between these two undefeated teams right after this. Profits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at Bliss. This game is brought to you by Aaron Mizzarelli of State Farm in Randolph. My licensed and experienced team members are here to serve you for all of your insurance and financial service needs in New Jersey and New York. We offer excellent customer service and our office is conveniently located in Randolph, New Jersey. For a free auto, home, life, or business quote, visit us at AaronMizzarelli.com or call us at 973-389-9999. Sussex Meatpacking in New Jersey is a family owned and operated business specializing in U.S. All right, we're back here and over to the outside. A little bit of a run by, I think it was Brent Fleck. Yeah, they passed it to Brent Fleck and he gained some yards that time, so mirroring one of their previous plays. Picks up 12 in the air. Another first down for Mountain Lakes. We have a score update here. Caldwell also undefeated in this American Gold Division. Well, George, they're taking care of business against West Essex. So far up 21 to 7, I believe, in the third quarter, correct? That's correct, yep. We have our good friend David Hashagan on that call. Hand off by Minitor. Red Zapodzik rumbles down, gains four. Second down and six coming up after the Ian Red Zapodzik run. And this fourth quarter is brought to you by the Rogers Foundation. They're a 501c3 charitable organization that aims to give back to those in need through volunteer service and financial support. Visit www.rogersfoundation, that's Rogers with a D, like Aaron Rogers, dot org today and help them support the seeing eye of Morristown NJ with a generous donation. Verona up 21-7 on uh, Morris Catholic. Well, that's a big one for Verona. Look at to try to climb back after a slow start in the division as Minitor has an incomplete pass over to the outside. Yeah, we look at the division and it's it's big with the haves and the have not so far this year. Caldwell, Mountain Lake, Hanover Park, all three and zero. Verona one and three. Madison have not won and Morris Catholic have not won. And Hanover Park still have Caldwell, Verona, and Morris Catholic left. Mountain Lake still have Caldwell and Verona left after today. This is already their third division game. As they set up a third and seven now. Miniter adjusting the formation, putting Hernando back a little bit farther. They've got Zamba on the top of your screen. They look for the handoff. Oh. Fire over the middle is picked off. Another interception for Hanover Park. It's picked up by their number nine of Mike Farrell. And it's the fourth turnover of the game for Mountain Lakes. Yeah, great up play by the defensive line, really putting pressure on Minitor, and Farrell being Johnny on the spot, right place, right time. 
He was on the ground, too, and he just was like, oh, my gosh, there's a football in front of me. And he's got it. Michael Farrell <laughs> making the big plays in the big moments. Second week in a row, George, where Hanover Park has forced four turnovers from their other team. Yeah, they did a great job last week against Kittatini on the defensive side. The problem last week was getting the offensive going. Got more points last year, but now the, the key thing about turnovers is taking advantage of them. And if you want to turn over your appetite into one that's satisfied, check out the Office Tavern and Grill, who was our game sponsor today for Hanover Park and 20% off of food when you wear your Hornets gear before and after games on game day. Here's Asmir Parks trying to plow his way up the middle. Picks out maybe one for a second down and nine, but Hanover Park now in bleeding the clock mode. There's still a lot of time left to play, but their defense has been so good that at this point they just want to kind of chip away and watch that clock continue to wind down. Yeah, I think you do want to chip away at the clock, but at the same time, I would I would take a fast score versus oh. chipping away the clock. Oh, for sure, yeah. If the better insurance in this situation is to go up by two scores, especially since Mount Lakes has really showed the inability to do much of anything so far in this game on the offensive side. Last year, they were 11-2. and two. We got a run to the outside by Parks, and Scampers out of bounds around the 50. So he'll pick up seven on the ground, uh, set up a third and two. Mountain Lakes this season, George, have been one of the better offenses in the Super Football Conference. They scored 21 against Lenape Valley, 39 against Morris Catholic, and then 34 last week. And they could probably could have had more, but they had all 34 points in the first half. And then I think it went running clock towards the end of that game. Yeah, and you know what? I think you know this says a lot about. I think Hanover Park's a strong team. They're strong defensively. You know, I, Mountain Lakes is having a hard time getting their offense going. Um, but Mountain Lakes is potent. Like I would not, I, I would not be comfortable if I was Hanover Park. No, you can't count them out. As they send Parks in motion, Borello to the outside, running out of room, and now he's cleared some space. There he goes across the first down marker, and he's good to go as he picks up five on the ground for a Hanover Park first down as he scampers out of bounds at the 45. Yeah, that was a little, like, very reminiscent of his big brother, you yeah. know, who who loved to. If you didn't see anything open, did a couple check downs and didn't see what, and then, hey, let's, let, me, let me use my legs. It's amazing to me. They're both such skilled running quarterbacks, but Borello was the big man up the middle, and now Joey Borello loves to run on the outsides, but it's been equally as effective. Both, uh, both Borellos were their team's leading rushers in their respective seasons as starters last year and this year. Play fake, speed option. Here's Borello again. It takes three different members of the herd to bring him down as he picks up three on the ground for a second and seven. He's already carried it 17 times this game, George. As now we take under 10 minutes left to go. Hanover Park marching ahead. This would be a big win for them, George. They haven't beaten Mount Lake since 2020. And in the last couple of seasons, it wasn't particularly close, especially in a big year where both teams are undefeated in this matchup. Outside for Parks, now Jukes to the right side. Gets over the 40 and picks up about three yards. So it'll be third and manageable after the reception by Parks. Yeah, Parks doing a great job. A little guy, but really a little scat back. Nice little side to side moves. And if he gets a step, he's got a really fast accelerator. 5'7", 150, he's their version of Darren Sproles. I don't know if you remember him from <laughs> oh, the, yeah. the then San Diego Chargers and of course then the Eagles. He was always on my Madden teams. So I would always trade for him. <laughs> and that's why I was happy that Asmir Parks has an expanded role this year for Hanover Park. They look to give it to him. Now Borello jets up the middle, puts his shoulder down, and he's ahead for the first down over at the 31 yard line. Gain of nine on the ground. Watch this again from Borello, and this one really looked like his big brother. <laughs> I mean, watch this on the speed option. Again, they make you think that they're gonna give it to Parks again. As they have him go to the outside, and then he cuts through, finds the space, and that Hanover Park offensive line has really been putting in work today. Deep in enemy territory on the 32. Borello to the outside, picks up a block by Philippone, gets over the 30. And it's a gain of two on the ground, second down and eight. This is 19th carry of the ball game. Yeah, they've really abandoned the pass a little bit more here, George, but I think that that's actually helped their offense. They realized that, look, they, they knew that uh, Borello wanted to throw the ball all over the place, especially after 15 of 19 last week. And it wasn't really working in the first half, so 
Again, another strength of Dan Fulton, halftime adjustments, and this team's looked a lot more effective here in half number two. Borello up the middle, trips forward. He got over the 25, maybe he got to the 24, gets six, third and short. And again, not many big plays here. I mean, there's been three big plays in this game and all on the ground, but Again, this is what they need here. George, maybe they can do both. Maybe they can get the score and wind down the clock. I mean, that'd be the ultimate for trying to pin down a dominant Mountain Lakes team. Yeah, well, they're doing a great job. They're already five, six minutes into this drive, and they're moving the chains. Either way, for either team, whoever comes out on top, this is a statement victory. So you got Philip Hone to the outside. He's got some blocks, pushes the side, and he's down at the 15. First down for Hanover Park as he gets 10 in the air. Bivakwa brings him down. And now Hanover Park knocking on the door. This is the closest, this is really the closest that they've been, George. When they've scored, it's been from pretty far out. So let's see what they can get done this time around. They have a 50 yard and a 40 yard TD. They actually haven't been this close to set up a play. And Hanover Park's been doing those swing passes a lot. They must see something that they like and and Mountain Lakes has, has given them, I think Mountain Lakes put a little closer up top on those, on those wings. Borello on the delay, weaves through, knocks a man down in front of him, and picks up seven as he's right in front of the five yard line. How about that from, I mean that stiff arm was absolutely nasty that he had working his way in there. And Borello again, just with the delayed run, waits for the holes in front. And then watch the stiff arm at the very end. Just brings his man down. And it's not easy to bring Brent Fleck down, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Brent Fleck, 6'1", 185. As Hanover Park taking their time for their play calls, letting it click down to about six minutes left. You know that means, George, it's almost the end of game time. And you've got to go over to the office tavern and grill to take advantage of their deal. 20% off when you wear your Hornets gear. As Borello, it's spun around. It'll be just short of the first. I wonder I if they picks I, up two. I wonder if they'll wake, make fun of me if I show up with my, my varsity old varsity jacket. I don't think so. You'd be like, <laughs> hey, it's for the discount. I still, you saw me. I still wear my varsity jacket. It's the warmest jacket that I own. Of course, the circumstances were a little different. We were in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and it was about seven degrees outside. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Again, anytime, anywhere, we'll be there. More Sussex Sports. You can email my man George over to my left, George at moresussexsports.com if you want your game broadcast. And we our goal, George, has been to add more, and that's what we've done this year. We've got 13 concurrent broadcasts right now for Friday Night Football. It's Borello up the middle, gains the yard he needs, and that's a first down for Hanover Park with five minutes left. I'm running out of space on my score sheet here. He's carrying the ball too much. <laughs> He's got 23, it only fits 24. And out of your Mountain Lakes. Yeah, I don't know, you either, I think, have to let them score quickly or you got to go for the ball on these tackles because you need a turnover in this situation. Or try to stop them. I mean, well, let's, let's, let's they see. They could stop them. But again, those halftime adjustments, and they're really taking advantage of that offensive line here. Got Reardon over on the right side, and then the 62 of Frankie Falco Jr., six foot 195. I mean, combined, those two guys are way over 400 pounds. And those are just the tackles. Got Finn Kenny as the left guard as well. Here's Borello. He's going to run behind Kenny, rumble forward, and he gets down around the two yard line. So that'll be a second down and goal from the two, or rather from the three, as Hanover Park again starting to make him sweat over on the Mountain Lake side. Yeah, if you're Coach Fusco, this is a tough situation. You got time running down, it's getting under four minutes. And you, Hanover Park's knocking on the door. If they score, you're gonna have to score fast twice. If you hold them, then you can take your breath. It was close when they played last year too, George. Almost a year to the day. 14 to seven, Mount Lakes won that game. And that was over at Wilkins Field. From the shotgun set, Philip Pone is in the backfield as well. Borello runs behind him. Did he break the plane? And no, he did not. He's down, George, around the half yard line. Third down and half a yard to go. And now the question is not if they are going to run the ball, but who's going to be the carrier. And um, my guess would be Borello. Why, why not? I mean, every time he's catching the ball, he's getting a couple yards. 
And I think Fusco is going to rethink this and say, like, all right, listen, this is what we got to do. If it's Barella, we got to we got to stuff up the middle. We can't let them have one yard. Yeah, that's what they have to do to stop him. And honestly, if I'm Coach Fulton, I mean, they haven't kicked a field goal this year. You kind of want to go for it. Although you do have two decently accurate extra point kickers, and it does make it a two-score game if you can get it because they are at the two-yard line, which is exactly extra point range. I think it's, he's going to be forced with a decision. You yeah. let Mountain Lakes make Hanover Park make a tough decision. Yep. And then if you're Mountain Lakes and they go for it, you want to stop them. Either way, uh, really interesting spot right here for, for Hanover Park and Mountain Lakes. They're going to stack the box on the inside. Defensive ends of Nick Fayo and Cosmo Fusco and, of course, the big nose guard of Trey Schneider going to try to send him down along with Marco Zamba, who's been a big offensive lineman, or rather, uh, outside linebacker for him. He's usually the other pass rusher coming in, but Hanover Park doing what they do best and spreading out the defense. They send a man in motion. Jet sweep to the outside. There he goes. Bashes went no. over. Did he get enough? He did not That's get it. That's Kevin Laparnos, and he did not get enough. He picks up two and is stopped just short of the plane. Amazing stop by uh, Bavakwa, man. That was a great play. Did a great job last year in the playoffs. And uh, great stop. Check out this play. Brett, that's textbook football right there. Bevaco was there, and along with Justin Brenfleck was the man who ultimately brought him down. And again, now it's a tough decision for Hanover Park. The clock's ticking, though. That helps them. And I think they're going to let it wind all the way down and call a timeout to think things over. Right now, they're showing their base offense, two receivers on either side, and now Colts Fulton calls the timeout. So, George, I mean, you've been around Hanover Park football longer than I've been alive. So what do you think is going to happen here? They have one yard All to right, go. Take it easy with longer than we've been alive here. <laughs> what? I, was, I was giving you know, what you got. It's a dignified thing, George. You have the salt and pepper goatee going, right? You're back at your alma mater where you took a couple licks down on this field. So I, I'm crediting you as much as possible for your knowledge on the situation. Yeah, I, I, I can be a homer, but, you know, it's it's funny. Like, I love – this is high school sports. Oh, I love sure. all the tradition. I love the Hanover Park tradition. You cannot, you know, the tradition that comes out of Mountain Lakes is second to none. The oh, alumni no. is insane. I've gotten to know them personally. They're they're really great. And, uh, you know, they, they expect to win every single game. They, they do. They expect a championship every year. Yep. And what's great, I mean, like Coach Doug Wilkins won countless Fuscos, taking the the. the They've really the passed the torch well, yeah. He's done a great job. He has a bunch of sectional finals. They were in the group finals. Yep, they won yeah. the section last year. Representing our area. I was so proud of those boys last year, getting all the way to that group final. And that's why we both had this game circled on our calendar since the schedules were released. And I'll tell you what, this game has lived up to its billing. Stout defense on both sides. Hanover Park will go for it. Kovacs in the Wildcat, up the middle, leaps. I think oh, he stopped God. as he stuffed down. And now Mountain Lakes with momentum will have 99 yards to go in two and a half minutes. <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. This is where it gets fun. This is high school sports. You know, we just talk about tradition. You know, great stop right there. And uh, we got to take another look at this. Look at this defense coming up on Kovacs. They knew what was happening. Look in the back there, Bradley Rogers, able to wrap him up. They'll have to go 98 yards, George, in 140 seconds, 141 seconds. They have not seen the end zone since the first quarter after a 46-yard rush by Hernando set up an 18-yard touchdown to Zamba. Since then, it's been slow running, and of course, a lot of turnovers for Mountain Lakes. They have not played a clean game offensively. And they're going to need everything to go right here to at least tie this one up. Hanover Park up seven on their home turf. They started off. Miniter looking to pass early. Hanover Park getting all kinds of pressure by Kenny and company. And they complete to Bevacqua. And Bevacqua's down at the 25-yard line. Getting a 23 in the air. It's a first down for Mountain Lakes. How about that one? Yeah, you think Bevacqua wants this game? He made that great play at the goal line. Now he made an unbelievable pass. Check out this, this pass and catch play. Miniter just doing everything he can to get that ball out. Like, this is backyard football right there. And it's his first catch of the season. Miniter now looking for Bavakwa again. They send a lot of pressure, and he just fires it out of bounds. There's nobody there. 
Yeah. Uh, and Coach Fulton it. wants intentional grounding. He's not going to get it. He's outside no. the numbers. He's, yeah. But, yeah, of course, he's a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he's one of the most animated coaches you'll ever see. Every play, he's got his hands up in the air, whether it's something positive, if it's for positive or for negative. And that's the kind of passion, again, that you love from high school sports. Oh, absolutely. Now he's got his arm crossed when the play goes on as we've got our, our body language reader. Uh, hey, if I'm him, too, I'm acting the exact same way because, you know, you got to be nervous in this type of situation. Oh, yeah. It's you, second and ten. Well, you know, you're up seven on the the, the orange helmets and, and white uniforms here. You know what this team can do. Minuter from the shotgun, something you never see. He's looking for Zamba the whole way. Zamba on Tatawi, and oh, my goodness, that was quite the push that we saw there from Zamba. No flags fly as it's an incomplete pass, third and 10. But George, if we look at this one again, I mean, Zamba just pushes him right down <laughs> over on that side. Yeah. Trying to get away with something there, I think. Uh, you know, well, he's a big receiver. He, he wants the ball. These guys want it. I do think he got a, might have got away with a little uh, something there. But, uh, you know, I think good no call. Let's let this guy's play. He's got six inches on Tantawi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that he had running down on the end. And Look, again, you got the passion coming into this game, and I'm glad that they let him play because that is a big play and a big moment. Miniter fakes to the sides. Two-man blitz up the middle. They look to the end. Lepardos, oh, what a catch on the sideline. What a catch on the sideline by Brent Fleck. 27 yards in the air. It's a first down at the 50. Excellent play there. Excellent read by Miniter. He liked what he sees. Again, these guys play been playing for years. They know what they're doing. Miniter, he looks. He looked over to the left. He saw something there. Say, hey, listen, we're gonna get go, get go, give it a go, give and go. This might be the best passing wing T team I've ever because Miniter again. You were talking about it before. He's got the arm, but this team historically runs a wing T to full effectiveness. Now Miniter again in the play action. Receiver falls down. He's hit as he throws, and it's in and out of the hands of Malmati. And it'll be a second down and 10 from midfield. Now they've got 91 seconds left to go, but they made a lot out of the first 50 that they had. Yeah, and I, I, you know, this is funny. I mean, they're, they're moving the ball down the road. Mountain Lakes is not a passing team, no. you know, but it, you know, Fusco needs to get the ball down the field, so this is what they're doing. Minute in his senior season, 5'11", 175 pounds. Known for his game management ability now, trying to lead a fourth quarter comeback as he gets a drop here by Hernando, who heard the footsteps coming. And even the fear that Hanover Park's defense instills can make plays for them sometime, because he was wide open for that catch. Yeah, he was. And, you know, they, they've been doing, Hanover Park's doing a great job containing the edges on the passes and on the runs. And maybe a little bit, uh, he heard a little footsteps, though. But nothing doing. Even if he caught, he wouldn't have got much. It's amazing to me that they're beating Chris Dowling, Samson Veach, and Michael Mucci in the middle. I mean, those are some great linemen. They're avoiding Cosmo Fusco, who again is, or Fusco is going to UPenn for football. Minuter surrounded, somehow gets rid of the ball, oh. and the pass is incomplete. So it'll be fourth and 10, but it could have been a lot worse. Oh my God, Minuter, that was an amazing play by Minuter. You know, just getting the ball out of his hands. That could have, they, right now it could be fourth and, and 20, but instead it's fourth and 10. So let's, let's take a look at this again. How did he get that ball out of there? George, you look see NFL quarterbacks that oh. don't make that play. Wow, that is amazing. That looks like Eli Manning on the helmet catch. It did look like Remember that. Remember Vince Woolfork like, has like his horse collar <laughs> and he finds Tyree. He had no David Tyree downfield this time, but he did keep his team in this ball game as they'll be at midfield and they need 10 <laughs> or more now to try to come back against the Hornets. Yeah, and this is the game right here. This is it. If you're Fulton, you know, here's the thing and this type of play. If the defense is probably going to pay some, play some kind of a prevent, so they're going to give him something. The problem is how much you're going to give. And if you're, you're Mountain Lakes, do you take what they're going to give you and try to make something happen? And it's tough because you know that Hector Lopez and Finn Kenny are going to be bearing down on him each and every play. They've beat the interior linemen. And I think that's a sign that Mountain Lakes might be a little tired there. So Minitor, I don't think he's going to have all day to throw like he did in the first half. So Hanover Park's defense is back. They're ready. They've gotten their instructions from Coach Fulton and company. And here comes Daryl Fusco's group as well. Ball with the nose on the 50-yard line. A minute and 20 seconds left to go. Hanover Park are up by seven on last year's Group 1 state finalists. Minuter, shotgun, four receivers. They look like Hanover Park's offense here. Drops back, 
Here they go, pass up the middle, no one close! They're looking for flags. That was an uncatchable ball. They won't get a flag, and Hanover Park, with 75 seconds left, will take over at midfield. Well, Hanover Park doing a great job. Well, check out this pass rush, which I think won the game. This was a pass rush force. Minder had to get rid of the ball. He threw it up. It was no, no nothing. It wasn't an uncatchable ball. And uh, he had no, no other choice. He had uh, Hanover Park did a great job getting in his grill and gets the turnover. Philippone and Reardon applying the pressure. Philippone got blocked. Reardon was bearing down right on top of him. And Minder is 5'11". Reardon's got five inches on him. So he just had his big arms in the air. Tries to fire over in the middle of the field looking for Red Zapodzic and nobody home. So now Hanover Park will try to grind things down. I believe that Mountain Lake still has two timeouts at their disposal. Well, they're going to use them, and we're going to go in victory formation here. See, Neal's down at the 45-yard line. Morello does. And I guess the clock is I, Maybe they ran out of timeouts. I don't think they did, though. I thought for sure that they still had plenty of time, or at least two left to use. They might use them, I guess, in the later downs. Yeah, not a bad. Let's see what they decide to do here is they still have to kneel it down two more times. Because I was I was trying to keep track in my head. I mean, they don't have it up on the, on the scoreboard. But I thought for sure Mountain Lake still had some timeouts as they kneel it down. And yep. it'll be third down now coming up. The clock is running. They move the sticks back. We see the celebration, and yep, that's it. No timeout to be called. The Hanover Park Hornets have slayed the dragon, and a remarkable run to the season continues for these Hornets. They flipped the script from last year, and they beat Mountain Lakes 14 to seven at home. And huge win for the Hornets. They had to win this game. They had a tough win last week. That I say win, they beat Kid at Tinney, 6 yeah. nothing. They were lucky to get out of there without a loss. Now they're 4-0. Now they're heading into a big next week where they are facing what looks like to be another undefeated Caldwell team. Yeah. So they needed that momentum. Yeah, so great job by the Hornets. If you're Mountain Lakes, look, you guys, you, a lot of these same guys made it to the group championships in group one. This is a group two team. Yes, it hurts a little bit, but not as much because they're playing up. And so as far as PowerPoints are concerned, listen, use this as a gut check, man. Yeah. This is a team. You're going to face a lot of great teams when you get to the playoffs. So uh, great ball game, 14-7. Could ask for more. It's a huge win for Hanover Park. Jack Kovacs, a superstar in the second half, and our Jen Bossolino, coach of realty, player of the game, as well as, well, that's actually for later on in this contest. First, we have a different player of the game to shout out. Our player of the game presented by Vivacqua's Reservoir Tavern will be Luke Reardon. Again, George, he opened up the running game all contest long. Big runs from all sorts of different runners. He allowed openings for Philippone, for Borello, for Parks, in the passing game as well. We often don't sing about these offensive linemen, but man, oh man, did he have a challenge today with uh, Marco Zamba and Fusco bearing down on top of him. And that is why he's today's Bevacqua player of the game. Brought to you by Bevacqua Reservoir Tavern. And congratulations to Luke Reardon. Come on down to the Reds anytime for your complimentary pizza. That'll wrap things up here, George. Huge win for the Hornets, who are now 4-0. and And at the top of that American Gold division, it'll be probably them and Caldwell at 4-0, both next week as they have to travel over there to see if they can take him down. From all of us here at Morris Sussex Sports, for Tyler Greer pushing all of the buttons over, or rather Tyler Greer pushing the buttons on the camera, for Christina Fancasta, our producer, doing an excellent job over to my left, for George Muha, our executive producer and president, Caitlin Langan, our, exec, our, our associate producer, my name is Zach Smolin, reminding you, as always, to stay frosty, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for sticking with us here on Morris Sussex Sports. the other end of the field with his foot
right on that line. Original line of scrimmage is fumbled by Minute and recovered immediately by Hanover Park. It's the number 11 of Joey Philippone and a big turnover for Mountain Lakes, a team that usually plays it very cleanly, Evan in the air. And off to the outside, has some room, spreads through the middle of the defense, keeps on going, carries the pile, and he broke loose! He broke loose, but lost his balance at the 20 yard line. Jordan Hernando, what a run from the 34 to the 20. That's a four play action, fires, end zone wide open is Marco Zamba, his favorite target, and it's a quick touchdown for the herd to come right back with a chance to tie it. 18 yards in the air in the TD. And just look how wide open Zamba is. Miniter looks back for the play fake, tries to find Zamba, now heaves one down the middle of the field, is picked off again! Another turnover in this contest, and who is it this time but Asmir Parks, face, or rather a little stiff arm action over at the 50. The Hanover Park fans want a flag, but I think it was just the Hernando in motion. Minitor hands it off up the middle. Nowhere to go. Ball was loose. And dancing outside of the outside of the sideline is Coach Fulton. And they've got it. Hanover Park had it at the bottom of the pile. Let's take another look at that one because that is covering the receiver at the top of your screen. I believe that's Lepardos. Morello drops back, has five options. Looking deep, fires over the middle, and it's swatted out of the way. Once again, Ian Redzapajic able to sniff out a ball right away. And let's look at Redzapajic plays they have in their two-minute drill. Now Zamba will work on Tentawi. 